we now know what a probability distribution is. It could be a discrete probability distribution or a continuous one, and we learned that that's a probability density function. Now let's study a couple of the more common ones. So let's say I have a coin, and it's a fair coin, and I'm going to flip it five times. Flip it, flip five times, and I'm going to define my random variable x. I'll define, I'll make it a capital X. It equals the number of heads, number of heads I get after five flips, after five flips. Maybe I flip them all at once. Maybe I have five coins and I flip them all at once and I just count the heads. Or I could have one coin and I could flip it five times and see the number of heads. It actually doesn't matter. But let's just let's say I have five, well, one coin and I flip it five times, just so we have no ambiguity. So this is my definition of my random variable. As we know, a random variable, it's a little different than a regular variable. It's more of a function. It assigns a number with an experiment. And this one's pretty easy. We just count the number of heads we got after five flips. And that's our random variable x. Let's think about a little bit of, of what are the different probabilities of getting different numbers here. So what is the probability what is the probability that x, big capital X, is equal to zero? So what's the probability that you get no heads after five flips? Well that's essentially the same thing as the probability of getting all tails, right? This is a bit of a review of probability. You'd have to get all tails. And what's the probability of each of these tails? What's well, one half? So you'd have to be one half times one half times one half times one half times one half. So it'd have to be one fi one half to the fifth power. One half to the fifth power, which is one to the fifth is one over two to the fifth is thirty-two. Fair enough. Now what's the probability? And this will be I'm going through all of the you know a little bit of a probability review. Just I think it's important just to get the intuition of what where we're going now and how you actually form a discrete probability distribution. Now what's the probability what's the probability that you get exactly one head? Well, you could have you could that could just be the first head, right? It could be heads, then tails, 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 tails. Or it could be the second head. It could be probability of tails, heads tails, 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 and then so forth. The, 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 this one head that you get, it could be in any of the five spots, right? So what's the probability of each of these situations? Well, the probability that you get a head is 1 half. Then the probability of your tails is 1 half times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half. So the probability of each of these situations, each of these situations is 1 over 32, just like the probability of this particular situation. In fact, the probability of any particular order of heads and tails is going to be 1 out of 32. Now, there's actually 32 possible uh, scenarios, right? So the probability of this is 1 out of 32. The probability of this is 1 out of 32. And there's five situations like this, because the heads could be in any of the five spots. So the probability that we have exactly one head is equal to 5 times 1 over 32, which is equal to 5 over 32. Fair enough. Now it gets interesting. What is the probability, I'll do each of these in a different color, what is the probability that my random variable is equal to 2? So I flip the coin five times. What is the probability that I get exactly two heads? Now it becomes a little bit interesting. So what are all the situations? I could have heads. Heads, tails, tails, tails. I could have a head, tails, heads, tails, tails. And if you think about it, there's these two heads, and they can go in a bunch of different places, and it starts to get a little bit confusing. You can't just think of it in, in a kind of the scenario analysis like we did here. You can, but it, it becomes a little bit confusing. Well, you have to realize one thing. Each of the scenarios, there's a 1 out of 32 probability, right? 1 half times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half times 1 half. So that's a 1 out of 32 probability, right? each of those. Now we have to think about how many of these scenarios satisfy our condition. Two heads. So essentially we have, you can imagine, you know, we have five flips, and we're going to choose two of them to be heads. right? So you can almost imagine like if you had all of the flips sitting around, and we had two chairs, and we said, OK, whichever flips sit in these chairs, they get to be the heads chair. Right, or they get to be the heads flips, and we don't care in order of what order they sit in. And I'm I'm going someplace with this, just so you get hopefully a little intuition. And you might want to watch some of the probability videos on this when I talk about the binomial theorem and all of that, because I go into this in a little bit more detail. 
But if you think about it that way, the binomial coefficient kind of starts to make sense. Because if you think about, okay, I have, I have uh, five heads. Who's go? I have five flips. Sorry. Who's going to sit at? Which flip is going to be the first heads? Well, there's five possibilities, right? Let me do this in a different color. There's five possibilities for which of the positions or which of the flips is going to be the first head. Now, how many possibilities are there for the second head? Well, the first the fir the the first flip that we used used up one of the heads chairs, right? Or uh, sorry, the first heads chair, the first head spot was used up by one of the flips. Now w there's only four flips left. So there's only one out of four flips that the second head could be in. And you saw that here. I picked the first one to be a heads here, and then we said, okay, one of these four also have to be a head. Or if I said, okay, this is the first head, then either this one, this one, this one, or this one has to be heads. So there's only four possibilities. So all I'm saying is, the first time around, there's five. Uh, you have five different possibilities for where the first heads could be, and then the second time around, you have four different possibilities. And I have to think about it. When we when we count it just like this, we're we're being dependent on order, right? But we don't care which flip is in which heads. We're not saying that there's kind of a you know we're not saying that this is a heads one or this is a heads two. These are both heads. There it doesn't matter. We could have this being the the you know flip the head seat one. This could be head seat two, or it could be the other way around. This could be the the second head spot, and this could be the first head spot. And I'm saying that just because it's important to realize the difference between a permutation and a combination. We don't care about order. So there's actually two different ways that this can happen. So we divide it by two, and as you'll see, it's actually two factorial ways that it can happen. If this had three, we would do three factorial, and I'll show you how that can happen. And so this will be equal to five times four is twenty divided by two which is equal to 10. So there's 10 different combinations out of the 32 where you have exactly two heads. So 10 times 1 out of 32 equal to 10 over 32, which is equal to what? 5 over 16. 5 over 16. Now what is the problem? And actually, let me write this in terms of a binomial coefficient. This up here, that number right there, if you think about it, that's the same thing as 5 factorial over, what's 5 times 4? Five, 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So if I just want 5 times 4, what I can do is I divide 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial. right? This is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 3 times 2 times 1. And you're just left with the 5 times 4. So this is the same thing as that. And then, since we didn't care about order, we wanted the 2 here. And it actually turns out that it's 2 factorial. And I'll show you that in a little bit. It's 2 factorial times 1 over 32. This was a probability that our random variable, that we have exactly two heads. Now what's the probability that we have exactly three heads? The probability that x is equal to 3. So by the same logic, the first, the, the, the first head spot can be taken by one of the five flips. Then the second head spot could be taken by one of the four left remaining flips. And then the third head spot could be taken by one of the three remaining flips. And then how many different ways can I arrange three flips? In general, how many ways can you arrange three things? And it's three factorial. And you could work that out, or you might want to watch the probability videos where I work that a little bit better. But it actually, if you, know, if you just take a, um, you know, the, the letters A, B and C, there's six ways that you can arrange these, right? You could view these as the head spots, and we don't care about order. So it could be, you know, A, C, B, C, A, B. It could be um, B, A, C, B, C, A. And then what's the last one that I haven't done? It's C, B, A, right? There's six ways to arrange three distinct things. We're dividing by it because we, want, we don't want to double count these six different ways because we, we're viewing them all as the same thing, not in this case. But in the case of, we don't care which flip is sitting in which head spot. So that's why I got the 3 factorial. And this is the same thing. 5 times 4 times 3, this could be written as 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial. And then this is divided by 3 factorial. That's, this one is this one. And so this is equal to, well, I don't know what that's. See, 3 factorial is equal to 3 times 2 times 1. The 3's cancel out. This becomes a 2. This becomes a 1. Once again, 5 times 2, so it's 10. And then it's 10 and times, and there's 
each situation has a 1 in 32 probability. So once again, it's equal to 5 sixteenths. And that's interesting. The probability that you get three heads is the same as the probability you get two heads. And the reason that, well, there's a lot of reasons why that's the case. But if you think about it, the probability of getting three heads is the same thing as the probability of getting two tails, right? And the probability of getting of two tails should be the same thing as the probability of getting two heads. And so it's nice that the numbers work out that way. It's nice that the numbers work out that way. All right. So we're almost there. What's the probability of getting, what's the probability that x is equal to 4? Well, we could use the same kind of formula now that we've been using before. You know, it could be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. But that's, so it's 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. All the way, you know, how many ways can you arrange four things? It's 4 factorial. 4 factorial is essentially this thing right here, right? 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. You know, this is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So these cancel out, so it's 5. And then each of the scenarios has a 1 in 32 chance, so it's equal to 5 32 seconds. And once again, notice the probability of getting four heads is the same thing as the probability of getting exactly one head. And that makes sense, because four heads is the same thing as getting exactly one tail, right? And you say, oh, where's that one tail going to be showing up? Oh, there's five different spots for it. And each of the scenarios has a 1 in 32 possibility. And then finally, what's the probability that x is equal to 5? You get all five heads. Well, that's going to be, you know, it's going to be heads, 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 heads. Each of these has a 1 half probability. You multiply them, you get 1 out of 32. Or another way to think about it, if you think about it, the 32 different ways that you can have heads and tails with the, with, in these experiments, this is only one of those circumstances, right? This was five of the circumstances. This was 10 of the circumstances. Anyway, we've done the work now. We're ready to draw a probability distribution. And I've actually, I'm running out of time. Actually, let me continue that in the next video. And maybe if, you, if you're in the mood, maybe you draw it before you watch the next video.